While on WFEA radio, Maine Secretary of State Shayna Bellows just made a very poor attempt to justify why she single-handedly removed Donald Trump from her state's presidential ballot. Her argument relies on Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution, which gives states limited power when holding elections for senators or representatives, not explicitly a U.S. president. Even the power granted in this article is very minimal, such as selecting the time or place for an election, and mainly has to do with restricting states from acting on behalf of Congress, not empowering them. Now, during this radio interview, Ms. Bellows claimed there was no need for a court or jury to convict Donald Trump under the insurrection clause of the 14th Amendment because she can determine if Donald Trump is guilty all on her own. Now, this lady is crazy. Uh, she's acting as a dictator. And if you watched my interview from last night, she's going to be impeached for overstepping her powers of authority. The View host, Sarah Haynes, who once described herself as a left-leaning moderate, has just bashed Democrats for trying to remove Donald Trump from the ballot. Haynes stated she agreed with California's governor, Gavin Newsom, that this move is a very bad idea for their party, as it will only create the visual of a rigged election. Now, during the show, she stated... What will happen is that martyrdom will be one step more. We have a nation that doesn't believe in democracy, doesn't believe in voting. Everyone that loses says it was rigged and failed. I think this will create a vision, a visual to people that this was a rigged election. So the entire reason they're trying to say that Donald Trump can't be on the presidential ballot is because he asked questions about election integrity and voting and, quite frankly, dozens and dozens of voting anomalies. But now they're completely rigging the election so that he can't question whether the election is rigged. But we, the American voters, are now going, wait a minute, you guys are rigging the system. You're playing 5D chess to set this up so that you can remove a very popular candidate. But I, I agree with Gavin Newsom on this one. If you want to beat Trump, you got to beat him at the polls, not being a bunch of wimps that are shopping different court systems around to see which one is going to lean more progressive Democrat and take your enemy out politically. Now, Trump's main competitor in the Republican primary is Nikki Haley of South Carolina. And she is desperately trying to get him to debate her publicly. In a post on X, Haley stated, with only three candidates qualifying for the CNN debate, it's time for Donald Trump to show up. As the debate stage continues to shrink, it's getting harder for Donald Trump to hide. Unfortunately for Haley, it looks like it will be her and Ron DeSantis on the stage. Uh, as Trump has announced, he's going to be doing his own town hall with Fox News. Now, Fox is getting wise. They said, wait a minute, we missed out on millions and millions and millions of dollars by not having Donald Trump on the debate stage that Fox News hosted. So now they're saying, screw you other Republicans that are going to lose. We need the money. And so they're giving Donald Trump as much airtime as they want. Now, funny enough, uh, the Fox News town hall will take place at the exact same time as the CNN debate, which is January 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern. And you all know that Fox News and CNN, they're competitors, but they also hate each other. Now, the only reason other candidates that dared to push back against CNN uh, was Vivek Ramaswamy, who will also hold his own event with podcaster Tim Cast. Ramaswamy explained his decision claiming that CNN bullied him multiple times by censoring and then criticizing him extensively. If I had to make a prediction, I would guess that Ramaswamy is somewhere at the top of Trump's possible vice president list, but only time will tell. But even he is sticking it to CNN because they can't help but bash on conservative people. Now, disgraced Democrat Senator Bob Menendez 
has just been accused of accepting gifts, uh, gifts, excuse me, from the Qatari government, which just adds to the current bribery allegations against him. Now, prosecutors claim that Menendez used his political influence to bolster real estate developer Fred Dibes so he could land multi-million dollar deals with the Qatari royal family. In exchange, Dibes allegedly gave Menendez a hundred thousand dollars in gold bars, which seems to indicate that there was an under the table deal. Now, Menendez continues to scream as loud as he can that he is innocent. But seriously, why did you have a uh, hundred thousand dollars in gold from a mafia boss and four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash? And you sold our secrets to Egypt, and now you've been brokering on behalf of the Qatari government which is helping Hamas to uh, destroy Israel. So big problems for the Menendez family. Now, the computer repairman from Delaware who handed over the Hunter Biden laptop, John Isaac, has just disclosed that his house was swatted on December 30th. He stated, I was not home, but the outstanding men and women of the Wilmington Police Department responded quickly and professionally. All that was achieved was wasted time for the police department. Nothing. Let me repeat. Nothing will take me out of this fight. Cheers. So lots of people on both sides, Democrats and Republicans, being swatted. I think it's disgusting. I don't like anybody getting involved in this. Um, it's just really sad. It's, don't we live in such a pathetic nation when it comes to politics? Ugh. All right. Back in Israel... They have just reportedly taken out one of the most important leaders of Hamas in a drone strike. While the report hasn't been confirmed by the Israeli government, multiple media sources, including those affiliated with Hamas, have reported on the story. The man allegedly killed was named uh, Saleh al arori who had a $5 million bounty placed on him by the U.S. government last year. Israel purposely announced that all leaders of Hamas are dead men walking, which is seemingly starting to come true. However, this also has sparked fears that Iran may become more integrated in the war as a result. In Ukraine, Russia has continued its deadly revenge attacks by bombing Kyiv with another 100 missiles. This time, five people have been killed and over 130 injured. As I predicted, this war is not de-escalating, but is in fact escalating as Russia wants someone to come to the peace talk tables and Ukraine is dragging their feet because they don't want to give up land, but they are running out of bodies and bullets. And it's really, really sad. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. It helps get the video out and I would really appreciate it because you're amazing and I appreciate each and every one of you that watch me. Now, before you go, check out this important video. Do not leave YouTube without watching this video and I will see you on the next video.